Ereske, one of the smaller Hebridean islands of song, fable and legend, handed down from generation to generation for hundreds of years. Ereske, island of crofter fishermen and tweed weavers, the home of less than 500 inhabitants, all Gaelic speaking, and all resting a bare existence from the sea that is their highway and the little crofts that are their farms. On this island in the spring of 1745, Bonnie Prince Charlie landed. His memory is as fresh in the minds of every islander as though he lived but yesterday. And it was just such a house as this that made him welcome, and just such a scene as this that met his eyes. For little has changed in this corner of Gaeldom.
A primitive life may be, one with the cry of seabirds and the roar of breaking waters ever in the ear. A race of men, less tenacious than these, would long ago have given up the struggle. Nurtured under such hard conditions, they are content with what they hold and are happy to work the often meagre soil or face the dangers of tempestuous seas. Their security lies in wool, for upon this uncharitable soil, sheep thrive and make possible the home industry of weaving the enduring cloth well known to all. The dyes are natural and are scraped from the rocks. This is known as crottle or lichen as it is called elsewhere and gives a rich brown colour to the cloth but all sorts of vegetables and flowers are used for other colours. Their respect for the common rights for this very necessary commodity is such that around the flickering light of the will-o'-the-wisp which may be seen sometimes at nightfall over the bogs, a legend has arisen. 
There was a man, a blacksmith by trade, who went out at night, unknown to his comrade, to scrape a little crottle. The devil cursed him, and the community knew him no more. He was turned away into outer darkness, forever banished to wander through the dark night, searching for crottle. The devil gave him one consolation, and that was that he might take an ember of his fire to help him in his search. With the drying of the wool, the old spinning wheel which has done service from generation to generation now plays its part. And how many beautiful songs have been made at such wheels as these, it would be hard to say. There is something possibly in the turning wheel and the thud thud of the foot that drives it that calls for song. Or something in the twisting thread, maybe, that lends inspiration to the spinner. Music is in the soul of these people, and it is as natural as talk. There are songs of weaving, songs of spinning, songs for carding, songs for the crottle gathering. Traditional and melodious, as only such a people could make, living as they do in a land where the errant voices of the wind forever whisper. But of all their songs, there are none more spirited, or which call for more united effort of harmony and rhythm, than when the cloth is walked, or beaten till the fibres swell, and the cloth is fully shrunk. It may take ten songs to make it so, for here is a people who reckon effort, nay, even life itself, by the length of a song. A people with a lesson for us all, and who are able to transmute the dross of individual drudgery to the gold of united effort by the power of melody. <laughs> Thank you. 
تشکیل بچه‌مون